On Friday, September 27, 2024, prosecuting attorney Nick McClellan filed a motion in Lemonet to request that Judge Gall have a hearing outside the presence of the jury to determine whether defense witness William A. Tobin will be allowed to testify as an expert in the upcoming trial of Richard Allen. The state seeks to prohibit defense witness William Tobin from testifying about firearm examination until a relevance hearing is held. Tobin is a forensic metallurgist but lacks expertise in firearms examination. McClellan cited a similar case, the State of Indiana versus Caden Smith in Marion County, where Tobin's testimony was also excluded in January 2024. Attorneys Andrew Baldwin and David Hennessy represented Smith in that triple murder case for which he was recently convicted and sentenced. The main reason that state believes Mr. Tobin should not be allowed to testify is that he is not an expert in the field of firearm ex examination and his testimony would lack relevance and scientific reliability, potentially confusing the jury. The AFTE theory of identification, as mentioned in the motion, is a methodology followed by most firearm examiners, including those at the Indiana State Police and another defense firearms witness, Dr. Eric Warren. Mr. Tobin criticizes this widely accepted methodology as flawed. It is the basis for how firearms examiners identify and analyze tool marks and ballistic evidence. While McClellan stated in paragraph number six of this motion that this is what Tobin's expected testimony will be, I do think there's a possibility that part of Tobin's expert testimony may be in the field of forensic metallurgy if evidence is presented by the state that the unspent round found at the crime scene matches other rounds recovered during the search of Allen's home at 1967 Whiteman Drive. A total of 19 rounds were recovered in various places within Allen's home, in addition to a Winchester Elite ammunition box. Tobin spent 26 years as the chief metallurgist working for the FBI in the bullet lead analysis lab. An investigative report conducted by 60 Minutes and the Washington Post, combined with scientific evidence presented by Bill Tobin, resulted in the FBI announcing in September 2005 that they would no longer perform bullet lead analysis linking fragments and rounds discovered at crime scenes to evidence recovered for other rounds in the homes of suspects. Aside from eyewitness testimony, some of the most believable evidence presented in criminal cases in the United States comes from the FBI crime lab in Quantico, Virginia. Part of its job is to test and analyze everything from ballistics to DNA for state and local prosecutors around the country, introducing scientific credibility to often murky cases. But a six-month investigation by 60 Minutes in the Washington Post last November showed that there are hundreds of defendants imprisoned around the country who were convicted with the help of a now discredited forensic tool and that the FBI never notified them or their lawyers or the courts that their cases may have been affected by faulty testimony. The science called bullet lead analysis was used by the FBI for 40 years in thousands of cases and some of the people it helped put in jail may be innocent. For years, the FBI believed that the lead in bullets had unique chemical signatures and that by breaking them down and analyzing them, it was possible to match bullets not only to a single batch of ammunition coming out of a factory, but to a single box of bullets. And that's what the FBI did in the case of Lee Wayne Hunt, tying a bullet fragment found at the house where the murders took place to a box of bullets the prosecutors linked to Hunt. I'll put it exactly the way it sounded to me and the way it, I believe it to be. He said that this box of bullets is the same box of bullets was used to kill these people, made on about the same time. I think everybody in the courtroom assumed that this was valid evidence. 
Richard Rosen is Hunt's attorney. How important do you think it was to your client's conviction? I thought it was very important to our client's conviction. It was a single piece of physical evidence corroborating their story. And it came from, you know, it came from the mountaintop. The FBI first used bullet lead analysis while investigating the assassination of John F. Kennedy, trying to match pieces of bullets discovered at Dealey Plaza with bullets found in Lee Harvey Oswald's rifle. By the 1980s, the FBI was routinely using it to link bullet fragments found at a crime scene with bullets found in the possession of a suspect, almost always in cases where more reliable ballistics tests were impossible. Could you run like a standard ballistics test on these? No, they're too deformed for the conventional ballistics examinations. Bill Tobin, a former chief metallurgist for the FBI, says the Quantico lab was the only place in the country that did bullet lead analysis. And the assertion that you could actually match a bullet fragment to a specific batch or box of bullets went unchallenged for 40 years, until Tobin retired in 1998 and decided to do his own study discovering that the basic premise had never actually been scientifically tested. FBI lab personnel testified that you could match these fragments to this bullet. Yes, that's correct. I mean, what did you find out? It hadn't been based on science at all, but rather had been based on subjective belief for o over four decades. So what you're saying is, is that this is junk science? That's correct. It's, it's worthless as a forensic tool. Tobin spent months buying and testing bullets and consulting with manufacturers and found that bullets from the same batch weren't chemically uniform, that bullets from the same box didn't always match, and that it was statistically possible for every bullet manufactured in the U.S. to have tens of millions of twins. Back in 2002, the FBI lab asked the National Academy of Sciences to conduct an independent review of comparative bullet lead analysis. And 18 months later, its National Research Council came out with the report calling into question 30 years of FBI testimony. It found the model the FBI used for interpreting results was deeply flawed and that the conclusion that bullet fragments could be matched to a box of ammunition so overstated that it was misleading under the rules of evidence.